Listen, good morning. God bless you. Happy New Year to you. We're certainly praising and blessing God again for chance and opportunity to be gathered in the Lord's house one more time. It's the first Sunday of 2022. The Lord has kept us. He has sustained us. He has blessed us. He has brought us out to bring us in for us to come together to lift and to glorify the name of our Savior. I don't know about you all, but I'm happy about 2022. There are so many individuals, beloved of God, who desire to be in this place of worship and not able to worship with us on today. There are some who desire to be with us virtually. Some who desire to be on the prayer conference call. They cannot be gathered. But look what the Lord has done. He has blessed us and sustained us one more time to bring to him our best praise on the first Sunday. Somebody ought to praise the Lord up in here. You ought to make some noise to him. Come on, we stand all over the sanctuary, in our homes, wherever you are. We are standing as we move into celebration, as we praise and bless God for the first Sunday of the year. This is the day, the beginning of a new year. This is the day, the beginning of renewal and refresh. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, put them hands together. Welcome to New Ebenezer Baptist Church. Welcome to New Air. You are in an atmosphere that is filled with love and the Spirit is here. So just open up your heart. Let Jesus in today. Welcome to New Air. You are in an atmosphere that is filled with love. And the Spirit is here. So just open up your heart. Let Jesus sing today. Welcome, welcome in the name of Jesus. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. How many really love the Lord this morning? You can say you love him with your whole heart because he's been good to us. He allowed us one more privilege, one more chance, one more opportunity to gather in his name, to lift our hands and just say thank you for being good. Thank you for being kind. Thank you for blessing us, saving us, healing us, delivering us, and making a way. Oh, we bless your name, oh God. We bless your name. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me. In such a special way, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Any lovers of the Lord, come on, lift your voices. I love you, yes I do, I love you Lord, today, oh because you care for me, in such a special way, that's why I That 
That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, my heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. Lord, you pay the price for me. Way back on cash. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, my heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. Lord, you pay the price for me. Way back. First Sunday of 2022, my God, truly he is good, truly, truly. I know we all can sit back and reminisce on the past two years that just passed away, but one thing for certain and for sure, those under my voice can say God is good. He, he kept us, truly, truly, truly. It's hard standing up here this morning, 2022, because it, it could have been me. It could have been you. But I'm gracious, and I got enough sense to know that I love my Lord. I praise him for all and everything. We come too far to take, keep taking him for granted, because he don't have to do what he do as he keep doing what he do. My God, good God, I, I, if y'all didn't have a pastor, I'd have took a word right about now, but I'm going to do what I was asked to do, so our scripture this morning, our scripture this morning be coming from Psalms 150, and truly this is a, a, a a psalm that just touches my heart. Praise the Lord. Praise the God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the mighty firmament. Praise him in his mighty needs. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with triumph some sound. Praise him with, I'm sorry. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with trembles and dance. Praise him with strings and pipes. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud classing cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. 
praise the Lord. We got to praise the Lord for someone that's as good as he is. Let us pray. Our Father, we come, Lord, first, Lord, to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for, yeah, you being God and God all by yourself, Lord. Thank you for your darling son, Jesus, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that you left to comfort us and keep us, Heavenly Father. We come, Lord, with greatness within our hearts and in our minds, Heavenly Father. Ask you, Lord, to continue to be you and have your way within our lives and within our souls, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for yet, Lord, giving us yet another opportunity to come into the house to give you praise, honor, and glory. You're deserving of all, Heavenly Father, and we take nothing for granted, giving you praise, Lord. Thank you for yet being in the house yet one more again, 2022, Lord. Thank you for 2020. It was rough. Thank you for 2021. It was rougher. But, Lord, we know, Lord, holding on to your unchanging hands, all things can and will be in divine order, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. I give you all honor and all praise, Lord, because with you, Lord, all things are possible, Lord. So I ask right now, Lord, under the sound of my voice, all those that hear me, Lord, that you continue to keep us, guide us, hold us, and mold us, Heavenly Father. Let us be put in divine order with you, through you, and by you, and we'll be ever so mindful and grateful to go out and tell a dying world of a living God who can, who have, and who will sustain you and keep you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you forever, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your comfort. Thank you for your chance after chance, Lord. We don't know, Lord, but we know you know, Heavenly Father. So we just ask that you show us, Lord. Show us as you would a baby, Heavenly Father. Open our eyes, Lord. Let us understand it's time to stop playing with you and get real with you, Heavenly Father. Because we don't know the day nor the time, but we do know it's coming. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. We love you, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. We give all honor and glory to your son, Jesus Christ, for which we pray. Amen and thank God. for those who are convalescent at home and those in rehabilitation centers. We are praying a special prayer for Deacon Thomas Anderson, Sister Naomi Burrow, Brother Christopher Burrow, Brother Benjamin Moon, Sister Yvonne Price, Reverend Charles Edge, Brother Dennis Lay, Reverend Lenard Jones, Brother Jim Rhodes, Brother Horace Kegler, Sister Catherine Kegler, Brother Rufus Brown, Brother Christian Brock, Sister Judy Jenkins, Sister Pearl Cotton, Sister Annette Shannon, Brother Tyrone Gribble Jr., Brother O.C. Gators, Brother Herman Stone, Sister Madison Eaton, Arlie Cooper, Sister Jacqueline Raglan, Sister Mamie Owens, Sister Delaya Higgins, Sister Patricia Finley, Sister Minnie Kelly, Sister Mildred Strickland, Norma and Brittany Clemens, the Kegler and James families and the passing of Sister Kenyatta Kegler, Sister Audrey Miller and family and the passing of her sister, Sister Patricia Farr, the Cole family and the passing of Reverend Joseph Cole, and praying for the nieces and nephews of Brother Jay Madison and the passing of their mother. Let's please continue to lift those names mentioned in your prayers. Um, I also have a card to New Ebenezer. Thank you so much. New Ebenezer family, thank you for your words of co comfort during the loss of my brother, uh, the Wilson family. So let's continue to pray for them as well. Thank you. How many of y'all remember this old hymn? It says, Time is filled with swift transition. Oh, no, on a done move can stand. Oh, feel your whole song things eternal. And hold unchanging hand Everybody ought to hold to his hand God's unchanging hand 
world's vain riches. Oh, that so rapidly decay. Seek to gain the heavenly treasure. person next to you, tell him I'm still holding on. Oh, come on, tell him I'm still holding on. Y'all hold on one second. These signs is draining. The devil is alive this morning. Anybody love him in the house? Is there anybody who really love him in the house? I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. We're going to do that one again. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne for you are God and God alone because of you my cloudy days are gone 
I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Love me in your arms. You are my shelter from the storm. When all my friends are gone, you are right there all alone. I've never known a love like this before. Oh, I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Love me in your arms, you are my shelter from the storm. <laughs> yes. When all my friends are gone, you are right there all alone. I've never known a love like this before. I just want to say, that I love you more than anything. Any lovers of God in the house? If you love him right where you are, I just ask that you lift your hands and exalt him because he's been good to us. Oh, yeah, he's been better to us than we've been to ourselves. We can't figure it out, and God has already worked it out. If you know the words right here in this point of the song, you need to sing it with us. It says something like this. It says, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. He looked beyond your faults and saw your needs. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more. He gave us a second chance, Bush. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Matt, you know he healed somebody and he saved somebody from death. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. See, see, somebody is suffering with depression, and he opened their eyes again. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. He made a way. He made a way. He made a way. Yes, he has. Hallelujah. 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 I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. More than anything.
anything, more than anything, more than, more than anything, more than, more than anything, say more than anything, more than anything, more than anything. <laughs> More than anything, more than anything, <laughs> more than anything, more than anything, more than anything, more than anything. More than anything, more than anything, more than anything, I love you, Jesus, I worship and adore you, just want to tell you. Lord, I love you more than anything. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do it one more time right there. Later. Say, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Want to tell you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Let's do that again. I love you. I love you. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than Come on, if you love him, give him praise. Come on, if you love him, give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Let's worship. Lord, I love you more than anything. Any saints, any saints, any saints. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Come on, lift them hands and worship him. Lift them hands and worship him. Ooh. Love you, Jesus. Lift them hands and worship him. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Oh, Lord, I love you. More than anything. More than anything. More than anything. Come on, let me hear you. More than anything. 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 Yes. More than anything. More than anything. More than anything. Somebody say it with me, more than anything, more than anything, yes, more than 
than anything. My Lord, my Lord, more than anything. Mm -hmm. More than anything. More than anything. More than anything. God, you're so good and you're so kind. You have blessed us and kept us. You brought us through 2021. Allow us to venture into 2022. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for, thank you for your keeping power. You have looked beyond all of our faults. Forgiven us of all of our sins. Washed us and renewed us afresh. And have given us another chance. We praise you now for all that you're doing. Bless those among us who are sick. Those who are in hospitals. Those who are in nursing facilities. Bless those families who are bereaved today. Lift a bowed head. Bind up a broken spirit. Wipe tears from a weeping eye. And then, Lord, bless us who are gathered in the sanctuary. Those who watch us virtually and those who connect with us by phone. They not know what everybody's going through, but you know everything. You do all things well. Touch us individually and then touch us collectively. It's preaching time again, so pour in. Allow us to pour out. That when we leave this place, we leave here the better, not because of us but because of your word. Therefore, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. The saint says amen and bless God. Come on, put your hands together. Praise and bless him. How good the Lord is. 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 Listen, we greet you with the powerful and precious name of Jesus, who is our risen Savior who has certainly blessed us and kept us and brought us together again that we might lift, glorify, and magnify the name of our Savior. Happy New Year to you again. Happy New Year to you again. The Lord has been so good to us. He has allowed us to venture into the beginning of the year, and we praise and thank him for that. I said to somebody on yesterday, if we don't see another day, at least we made it in. Amen, somebody. At least we made it in, and he allows us the opportunity to fall in to the new year and to celebrate with great anticipation what the Lord has in store for us. We're certainly praying for all of those who desire the prayers of our church. We certainly keep them lifted and covered in our prayers. Those who are in hospitals, we're covering you uh, as well in our prayers. Jack Rag, we went back to the hospital on last night, so we're covering and lifted Jackie in our prayers. We're praying for those families who are bereaved at this time. Sister Audrey Miller and family, we certainly lift them in our prayers of the passing of her sister Pat. You all cover them up in prayers. They shall gather in the sanctuary of our church uh, on Saturday at 1 o'clock p.m., and we shall celebrate the life of our sister Pat. And so we encourage you all to be here and sharing with us. We're praying for the Cole family the passing of Pastor Joe Cole, Pastor Emeritus uh, of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church of Mount Clemens, Michigan. I want you all to lift them and cover them in prayer. We shall share with them on Saturday morning uh, at 11 a.m. in services for uh, Pastor Cole. So keep them lifted and covered. That Kegler family in the passing of Sister Kiyata Kegler. Funeral arrangements are incomplete at this time. We'll certainly gather and share those with you uh, when we receive them that we might be ready to prepare uh, to assist and serve uh, as well. And even in spite of it all, God is still good, isn't he? He is still good. We're praying, we're praying earnestly and we're praying honestly uh, for those individuals, those families who are dealing uh, with this coronavirus, this COVID-19 is running is running rapid, and so I encourage you all again to be prayerful. Cover yourselves. Amen. Prayerfully cover yourselves. Cover your children. That which is unnecessary, just don't do it. Amen. If it's unnecessary, just don't, just don't do it. And uh, cover yourself well. I encourage you all again to get vaccinated. Can't make you do anything, but I do encourage you all to get vaccinated. Numbers are on the rise. I have been in conversation with our staff. There is a strong possibility 
that beginning on next Sunday, only the vaccinated will be allowed in services and also in the activities of our church. This means all of us. Amen, somebody. This means all of us. As pastor, I've given that spiritual obligation to not just cover us spiritually, but to also cover us physically. Amen. And so you got to do that, what you need to do. And I should let you all know that we know what a real vaccine card looks like in comparison to a fake one because we've done some study on it. So I'm letting you all know we've got to do what needs to be done to cover us uh, and to keep us well. It is my responsibility to cover us, cover our staff, cover our members, most definitely cover our pastor. Amen. To cover us and to keep us well. Uh, as we walk this road together. Somebody ought to say amen, Pastor. Amen. amen. And so we're doing it, and we encourage you all to stand with us as we do it on today. Certainly solicit your prayers for preaching. Won't be before you long uh, on this, uh, this morning. Remember now, as we move forward, if you all paid attention to watch night, what an awesome watch night service we had. And you all shared with us in our watch night experience. What an awesome service we we had, it was during the watch night service that I presented to you all our 2022 theme. Our 2022 theme was presented on that night, moving beyond limits, breaking all barriers, moving beyond limits and breaking all barriers. We're going to use for a theme scripture this year, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, all right? And so you'll see the little banners going up around the church in just a few weeks or so, a week or so. You'll see them going up. You'll see the outlines going out in preparation for teaching uh, as well. So as we grasp this 2022 theme, we grasp this 2022 theme, beloved of God, I am certainly soliciting your prayers that you will walk with us through this theme and that you will allow God in this intimate wisdom to move you in this direction. In order to do it, I want to introduce the scripture. Part one of this theme is going to come from Romans chapter 12, verse number two. Romans 12 and two, as we start preparing ourselves to move uh, forward into this theme, All right? Into this theme, Romans 12 and two is our scripture for preaching on today. I'm looking at the new living translation of scripture. The New Living Translation of Scripture on today. Romans 12 and 2, New Living Translation says, Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Y'all see it? New Living Translation. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. If we're going to break barriers, if we're going to move beyond limit, we got to change the way that we're thinking. We'll do a little message today just simply entitled, Change Your Thought. Change your thoughts. Tell two people, change your thoughts. Change. Change your thoughts. Certainly solicit your press for preaching. This theme is timely for this season. It is timely for this particular season in which we are living. It's a new year. It's a season of renewal. It's a season of refreshing. It's a season of fresh starts. It's a, it's a season of surrender and also a season of commitments. While most individuals plan and prepare for what they consider to be the new year, very few individuals sit down long enough to evaluate, beloved of God, where they are. Nor do they speak to God about what they desire. We're known for what we're making uh, called New Year's resolutions. 
I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to eat right. I'm going to walk more. I'm going to stop drinking. You know, we just make resolutions. I'm going to be a healthier person. But the average person does not sit down and look at what the new year brings. Nor do we go into conversation with God about the new year. The new year brings about renewal. Because if you really pause and examine your life, you will have to agree with me that there are some things in our lives that have not been pleasing to us. Nor have they been pleasing to God. But yet we allow God the precious opportunity to be able to renew us. Only God can wash us and renew us and make us whole again. And only God in his intimate wisdom after renewing us can push us forward and use us that we might get the glory out of our lives. We got an opportunity in the new year to tell the Lord, renew me. And by asking God to renew us, then we're able to become refreshed. We're no longer bitter and broken, torn down, messed up, dragged about. We're able to become refreshed. We're able to stand up with the help of God, shake ourselves, and start all over again. I tell people all the time, ain't nothing like a fresh start. I was watching, reading one of the articles of a young man who was a part of the Detroit Marathon, and he tells the story about while running, he catches a cramp. He says the cramp knocks him down. He says, literally, knock me down. He says, I'm laying in the middle of the road with a cramp in my upper thigh. He says, the medics come along, and they start working on him and getting him ready. And once they release the cramp, they say to this young man, maybe it's a possibility that you ought not finish the race. The young man said he looked up and says unto them, thank you for your help. He said, I've been knocked down, but I got an opportunity to start all over. Again, what we fail to realize, beloved of God, is that when God gives us the opportunity of renewal, he also gives us a fresh start. And the fresh start is designed to remind us that we are to surrender to him. I need five of y'all real quick. That we are to surrender ourselves to him. And after surrendering ourselves to him, we commit ourselves to his permissive will. The only way, beloved of God, for us to move forward is to surrender and to commit. Yeah, to reach beyond, to reach beyond limits, to reach beyond limits, beloved of God. We got to take some opportunity to re-examine ourselves, to reach beyond limits, begin with the individuals and the mindset of the individuals. Yeah, this, this, this morning, I really want to kind of encourage us, you know, to set new boundaries, you know, set, set new boundaries and, and change, you know, how we think that God in his intimate wisdom will get the glory out of our lives. Let me show you where we're in trouble at and then I'll let you go real quickly up in here. Most of us, and note I said most of us, are limited because we are connected to our past. We're so connected, we're so connected to our past until we find ourselves limiting ourselves in our future. You know, we're so jacked up, we're so, we so concerned about how we were raised. You know, uh, the communities that we were raised in, the environment that we were raised in, coming from a poor family sometime with financial struggles and, and, and the living environment was not the best environment in life. You know, I listen to some members sometime talk and they would say, well, in our house we had mice. I said, we did too. We called them pets. In our house we had roaches. Every house in the neighborhood just about had roaches. We killed them and kept on moving own, but it does not determine who we are. Yeah, we are so connected to our past until we cannot see our future. We find ourselves limited because we're holding on to something that we need to let go of and the attitude that we cannot move beyond what is attached to us 
has hindered us from being what God desires of us to be. The majority of us in the room today, if we just really tell the truth, we can really tell the truth. I might not came from the best neighborhood. But I thank God for shelter over my head and food on the table and clothes on our backs and parents who care. We might not have had caviar and steak every day, but thank God for hot dogs and pork and beans and fried chicken and every now and then some pork. Y'all go to church with me up in there. Some pork chops. Thank God for collard greens and back and cheese and black eyed peas and grits and farina. Anybody in church up with me yet? Thank God for bowls of cereal. We probably didn't have Captain Crunch. We had the other stuff that just said Crunch, but it was just as sweet as Captain Crunch. Thank God that when we pause and look at our environment and where God has brought us from and pause and look at where we are today. Most of us, I wish I had like three people, just like real three good people in here. Most of us have outlived the environments that we come from. Most of us come are now living a better life than we actually lived on yesterday. Eight children and our mama in one house, three bedrooms. And one bathroom. No basement. I sure wish I had some help up in here. No upstairs. Everything on one floor. Five girls in one room. Two sets of bunk beds. Me and my brothers in the other room. Another set of, I wish I had some help in here. Another set of bunk beds. Mama in one room of her own. Eight of us in one house sitting at a table that only held five people. Able to eat a meal every day. But look. Wish I had some help. I sometimes pause and look at my own life. Look where the Lord has. Somebody ought to go to church with me in here. Where the Lord has brought us from. De Deb and I live in a house with four bedrooms, could be five. Two and a half bathrooms and a full basement with a sun porch on the back. I wish I had some help up in here. Yeah, yeah, more room than what we need. But God reminding us that where he has brought us. I wish I had some help in here. You cannot allow your environment of your past hinder where God desires of you to go. Anybody ever been told you ain't going to make it? You ain't going to succeed? You won't amount to anything? Anybody been looked at strangely because of the color of your skin? And folks didn't think that you ought to be in the positions that you are in today. Well, what God reveals unto you and I, that if we just adjust our thinking, help me somebody, we just adjust our, our thinking and, 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 and not, not be like others who have just decided, you know, that they're just going to fit in. God never wanted us to just fit in. God, God has given us plans. I know the plans. I have for you to prosper you. The Lord reveals to us the plans that he has for our lives. What the Lord desires of you and I to do, beloved of God, is change how we think. Tell your neighbor, change how you think. You ain't got to be broke. I get, I get a little upset, particularly today, Doc P. I get a little upset, particularly today, because when Negroes tell me they suffering, Everybody hiring. Every, every, even your mom and daddy hiring. Everybody hiring. Every, everybody looking for somebody. And you talking about you struggling. McDonald's giving you $15 an hour to cook some french fries, flip some burgers, maybe mop some floors, clean some bathrooms, and matter of fact, folk ain't even coming in to sit down. You can just deal with them out the window. 
You got to change the way that you are. That you're thinking, I got to let you go. You got to change it. Somebody say change it. You got to change the way that you go. Romans 12 and 2 says, don't copy the behaviors and customs of the world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. I'm almost done. Two thoughts or two keys are actually laid out in this particular passage of Scripture. Watch what it says. You can change. Somebody ought to put that someplace. You can. You can change. Secondly, it says if you let God do it, you can change. Here is the hindrance in our lives. Most of us don't believe we can change. We are thinking that we're no good. Thinking that we'll never be no good. Thinking that we'll never have anything. What's so bad about it is some of y'all speaking that mess. Well, they say I ain't going to make it. They say I ain't going to be worth nothing. They say I ain't going to be no good. I had a I had a teacher had a teacher in high school, Miss Kramer, and so and so I've always I've always been been known uh, as a big individual who will not be pushed around. No matter how big you were, I wasn't being pushed. Y'all ain't in it with me. I wasn't being. I wasn't, I wasn't being pushed around. And so, and so one, 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 one day they called Mama to school and said they were going to suspend me for fighting. And so Mama looked over at me and said, you was fighting? I said, yes, ma'am, again. She said, she said, Peanut, you got to quit fighting. I said, I know, Mama, but, you know, they started it. And so Mama kind of examined the thing to try to figure out what was going on. And so when they finally introduced the big Polak that I was fighting, Mama said, look at how big he is. You know, then she looked over at me and we started laughing about it, took my suspension and went on home. And Mama said to somebody, well, one thing I can say about him, he don't care how big they is. No. See, what, what has gotten most of us in trouble is we're afraid of the size of a situation. Help me preach it in somebody. The, the size of a situation hinders you and I and make us fearful and afraid and make us shiver and scared. But I went to Sunday school. Anybody went to Sunday school? I went to Sunday school. And, 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 what, and what are the, one of the stories that I heard that Sister Percoria Williams taught us over at Leland Ophico was a story about a fella named David and a fight against a fly by the name of Goliath. And she taught that Goliath was bigger than David, but David's faith in God was bigger than, I wish I had five of y'all up in here. And ever since I heard that story, I ain't never been afraid of nothing that's big. Because the lesson was that God helps those who trust him. Gotta go. Thought I'd tell somebody today, you could change. Yeah, you don't have to run in fear. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to run cowardly. You can fight. I wish I had some help in here. Yeah, if you can fight for the world, surely you can fight for yourself. If you can fight for change in society, surely you can fight for change in your own life. I told somebody the reason ridiculous thing is going on is not because we don't want it. But, but because most people have stopped fighting for themselves. Help me somebody in here. See, when you learn how to first fight for you, then you'll learn how to fight for what's going on around you. Have I messed up? Yeah. Have I done some wrong? Yeah. Have I been out of order? Yes. Does that mean I give up? Hell no. I'm a fighter. I wish I had five people. In the new year, he'll testify, I'm a fighter. I'm a, I'm, 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 a, I'm a fighter. The God that I serve is on my side. 
I got three stones too, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And every once in a while, I got to release one of my stones to fight the enemy that's coming my way. Well, beloved of God, you got to change how you think. Yeah, yeah, you got to learn. You got to learn how to look beyond limits and believe that you can go beyond limits. You got to learn how to think outside of the box. You got to learn how to look beyond your environment. Matter of fact, think different. Every mouse is a stepping stone. Every roach was a stepping stone. Y'all, they're going to go to church and get up in here. Yeah, every day of lack, was a stick of stepping stone. Every day that I struggled was a stepping stone. But now I can sing a new song. Look what the Lord has, has done. Give me two people that will testify. He brought me out of darkness into a marvelous, a marvelous light. Look what the Lord has done. The record says that we can change. All we have to do is not copy the behaviors of yesterday. Yeah, all we got to do is reject the customs of the world and start thinking with a brand new mind. Yeah, the scripture says, be ye transformed by the renewing of you mind. Another scripture says, and be not conformed yeah, to the will and the way of this world. But then turn around and be yeah, transformed. Yeah, got, got a close, but I, I remember Marlon when my boys was young. Yeah, one of the things that Hasbro made was a thing called a transformer. It was a little gadget of a toy when Christmas came on the list was Transformers. Yeah, the TV commercial came out Transformers. The cartoon came out Transformers. Yeah, I never shall forget when it was time to do a little Christmas shopping. Yeah, and we were in the store looking for Transformers. Well, I did not know that Transformers came in many sizes. They came in many shapes. It could be a car or it could be a truck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Transformers were unique in their characters. <laughs> this what would happen, it could be a normal car. Yeah, yeah. And you take the transformer and start flipping it and twisting it and turning it. Yeah, and things will start connecting. And before you know it, what was a car yeah, has now become a, an action figure. Yeah, I wish I had some help in here. Yeah. In other words, what was normal yeah, soon became abnormal. Yeah. What was normal yeah, now yeah, found itself becoming unique. Yeah, that's all I'm trying to tell you today is that if we change our way of thinking, yeah, even though we might look normal, yeah, God has a way of making us unique. Yeah, he can change us from the normal being yeah, and then turn around and make us superheroes. Oh, praise his holy name. That's why the last thing that the apostle Paul says is not only can we change, but if we let God do it, the Lord, he'll change us. Won't you tell somebody, let him do it? Because God knows how to break us down. Oh, praise his holy name. God knows how to reach into where we are. 
and change some story. He'll change our stony hearts into hearts of love. He changes our brokenness and give you an eye of betterness. He changed craziness and gives us comfort. He changes jealousy and gives us joy. Oh, praise his holy name. If you let the Lord help you, tell your neighbor if you let him, if you let him help you, he'll change. Oh, yeah. I said he'll change. Oh, yeah. He'll change what we used to be. Good morning, Ebenezer. God bless your heart. Thank the Lord for giving me new vision and spiritual insight. Thank the Lord for letting me see beyond Everline. Thank God for letting me see beyond the confines of the wall of the sanctuary. And he's given me a limit. This vision that says to you and I, we're breaking down barriers. We're moving beyond limits. We're going to reach the loss for the Savior. We're moving beyond limits. We're going to feed you. We're going to love you. We're going to hold you. We're going to help you. We're going to bless you. We're going to walk with you. We're going to talk with you. We're going to use any means necessary to reach you. The masses for the master. Praise his holy name. Goodbye. A good morning to those of us who are gathered. God, see beyond the limitations of man. Sin had robbed us of our hope. Sin had robbed them of their joy. Sin has separated them from God. And God sent his sons with no limits. He came seeking to save those who were lost. He broke bread with the sinners. He healed the disease. He lifted up the downtrodden. He walked with the broken. He hung out with the church folks. He corrected the wrong and turned it in the right. And to make sure that we got to glory, he gave us some blood. He died that we might live. They buried him into the new tomb. He got up from the grave, all power in his hand. He sits on the right hand in a seating for you and for me. And he keeps telling us there are no limits. All right. I wish I had some help in here. Onward, Christian soldiers. We're marching up the King's Highway. We're on our way to a greater tomorrow. Say yeah! On my way to new, on my way to better, on my way to greater, better ministry, greater ministry, new ministry, on our way to unlimited territories that lives might be changed, that we might be enriched, that we might be better. Change your thoughts. Watch this, and I'm done. If you change your thoughts, you will change how you talk. Change your thinking, you will change how you act. Beloved of God, if you take some time, and let God renew your, your mind. We'll give them our hands, give them our feet, but we won't give him our minds. If we will surrender our total being to the Lord, guess what? 
we'll be better. Much better. Whole lot better. Now let me have an honest pastoral moment. Some people will not walk this journey with us because they will not change how they're thinking. And what's dangerous is this. People have been doing stuff for so long, it's wrong and they think it's right. The average church is suffering because people in leadership don't know you got to change. You got to change. And the dangerous thing about changing for most people is that you have to surrender. And most people don't want to surrender. But if you change, if you surrender, if you commit, God will get the glory. Not just out of the ministry of the church, but God will get the glory out of the lives of the individuals. Can I tell you we on our way? Matter of fact, let me say it. I'm on my way with or without you. We're on our way. Our eyes have not seen. Years have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men. What great things God has in store for ministry. <laughs> I'll add that part for ministry. Somebody say for ministry. For ministry. We still got the same old thing going. It snowed. I don't stay at home. It's going to snow this week. This is Michigan. It's going to snow this winter. You got to change how you think. You need some eggs and it doesn't snow. You're going to get them eggs. Going to get that milk. They're real tall. Some of y'all out there right now listening to me. Going to get them eggs and milk. Stocking up. God desires to use us for his glory. And to use us for his glory, God will get the best out of us. And in turn, give us the best. Well, the invitation is extended. The door is open. The invitation to Christian discipleship is yours. Man, woman, boy, or girl. You can accept him as the Lord and Savior of your life. You can surrender unto him in sanctuary. Facebook Live or YouTube. On the conference line. You can surrender to the Lord and accept him as the Lord and Savior of your life. Straight away, you can renew that relationship. It can be renewed. You can accept him as the Savior of your life. This invitation is yours, man, woman, boy, or girl. You can come and accept him now. This is your invitation. Wonderful change. Wonderful change. Twenty twenty two can be your year of decision. You can accept him now. What a wonderful change. Come on. Call us. 313-361-0087. Pastor Mills, I want to give my life to Christ. Email us, newairdetroit at gmail.com. I want to give my life to Christ. Put it in the comments section. Pastor Mills, I want to give my life to Christ. I want a new year and a new beginning. This invitation is yours. Over me. A wonderful. 
a wonderful change. Bless your heart. Come on, put your hands together. Bless the Lord for this time of worship. Bless the Lord for this time of worship. This time of worship. This time of worship. We will move expeditiously into receiving our communion on today. The preachers and deacons coming. atmosphere of worship we shall commune together 2022 the first Sunday the reminder and the remembrance of the ultimate sacrifice that the Lord has made for us is before us again He reminds us of that telling experience on his way to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray for Jesus in his intimate wisdom decides to hold again that conversation with his disciples about leaving. But this time he goes into the conversation with explanations about the journey. He reminds them of his purpose, that he has come at the permissive will of his father to redeem a lost nation. When he does it this time, he does it with illustrations that they might have the clear understanding of his purpose. In a few days, he reminds them that the ultimate sacrifice should take place. For clear understanding, he takes the bread that's on the table and breaks it and explains to them that this broken bread represents what shall happen to his body when he pays that ultimate sacrifice to redeem a lost man back to his God. While yet explaining it to him, he takes the cup, the wine, the fruit of the vine, and says unto them that like this wine per se is poured out, so shall his blood be poured out on Calvary. Shed blood. The remission of men's sins. Broken body. Shed blood. He says unto them, I give you this illustration. Because after this event, I want you to continue to do this in remembrance of me. You know the story. How at Calvary, when he gives up the ghost for you and for I to be assured that he is dead, they break his leg. To be assured that he's dead. They take a spear and stick it in his side. Out comes blood and water. Blood for the redemption of man's sins. Water for water baptism. To remind us of the ultimate sacrifice. No, it ain't the Lord's Supper. It's communion. And we do so in remembrance of him. God, our Father, thank you again for the blessed opportunity to be able to commune now again together. Take now the contents of this table and God, move them and use them for spiritual purposes. That as we eat bread, we do so in remembrance of your broken body. As we drink of the fruit of the cup, we do so in remembrance of your shed blood. You remind us that if we eat and drink unworthily, we eat and drink damnation unto our own souls. So you remind us first as unbelievers to accept you as the Lord and Savior of our lives that we dare not eat unworthily nor drink unworthily. And then, Lord, examine all of us 
Consecrate our hearts, our minds, our spirits. Wash us anew. Refresh us again. That you, God, might get the glory in all things. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And bless God. We shall commune together one row at a time. Won't you stand those who are in the back? You stand, come and go this way. Those who are on this side, last row, stand and come to this, and come down this row. Those who are in the balcony, come on down. We shall commune together. Take your communion back with you to your seat. One row at a time. Same thing on this side. Won't you all stand? Come, come this way. If you are seated, we'll serve you. No, it was the blood for me. Yeah, one day died upon the cross. Come right on. Hey, D. Come on, next row. I know it was the blood. No, it was the blood for me. Yeah, one day. Savior's blood. Oh, one day when he died upon the cross. I know it. Those of you who are at home should be ready and prepared to commune with us now. Those who are at home as well, you should be ready to prepare to commune with us now. We commune together in the name of the Father and Son, the bread. name of the Holy Spirit, the cup.
remain seated. Our deacons will assist you real quickly. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood done sign. Oh, the blood. Yes, the blood. Oh, the blood done. Oh, the blood. Yes, the blood. Oh, the blood done sign. Oh, the blood done sign. Oh, 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 the blood, oh, the blood, oh, the blood done sign. Let's prepare for giving. Oh, the blood, yes, the blood, oh, the blood done sign my name. Oh, the blood, yes, the blood, oh, the blood done sign my name. Listen, it's giving time. It's giving time. We prepare ourselves to be a blessing in our giving on today. You know, giving is a great opportunity. We celebrate giving to be able to do your first set of giving for the new year. If you have not done so already, on your way into the sanctuary, you could have been pre uh, prepared and prepped and ready to give. If you have not, you can give now. Those who are at home and preparing to give by way of Giblify, other means of giving. Come on, we're standing all over the sanctuary. You know how we do it. In preparation for giving, we're standing. Those who are at home, you all stand as well with us and prepare to give. Stand with us, Lord. We thank you now for the opportunity to give. Bless now the gifts and the givers. Let it be used for the purpose of which it is received. You get the glory, honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're giving in the sanctuary, hold your hands up, and our officers will come to you if you have an opportunity to give on the outside. On your way in, hold your hand up. And they shall give. It's giving time. Come on and give. Come on and give. Three ways of giving should be on our screen. You can give by giving to five New Ebenezer Baptist Detroit. You can mail your tithes and offerings to the church. New Ebenezer Baptist, 6300 Hartford Avenue, Detroit, Michigan, 48210. Oh, beloved of God, you can drop off your tithes and offer it throughout the week and on Sundays here at our church. It is that giving time. I'm giving you a chance to give. Go ahead and give. I see you giving. I see you giving. chance to give. How good the Lord is. Come on, put your hands together. Thank the Lord for this opportunity to give. We certainly praise and bless God for you. Listen, keep some observations in mind. New Ebenezer, prepare to share with us. Prepare to share with us I think it is on the 15th of January, prepare to share with us in our annual church meeting at 12 o'clock noon. We know how to separate you and all that good stuff. It is church meeting. You need to be present. Uh, you need to be in attendance uh, and ready to come and share to receive information uh, from us and know what's going on at Ebb. A lot has taken place in 2021, and so do come and share with us in our church meeting. Do come and share with us in our church meeting. Also, our State Congress of Christian Education is preparing uh, again for our Christian Educators Conference. You can see Dean uh, Cecilia Dawson, members of New Ebenezer. You all can see her uh, and sign up. Sign up to be a part uh, of our Christian uh, Educators Conference uh, as well. Do govern yourselves according to those things. Keep in mind that we do need your assistance on Saturday, 1 o'clock p.m. Need our assistance. Uh, ushers and nurses, 
uh, our ministerial staff, as well uh, as our deacons. You all are needed uh, to assist as we take care of this family. Come on and stand. Again, thank God for all of our visitors. Come on, welcome all of our visitors today who are sharing with us. We praise and thank God for you being here and certainly sharing with us on today how good the Lord is. Big Mike had a birthday. Where Big Mike at? Where you at? There you go. Yeah. Big Mike had a birthday, 58 years old. And so uh, you all keep praying for him and wish him a happy 58? Eight. I'm sorry. Eight years old. Happy eighth, happy eighth birthday, Big Mike. Come on, let's go down from this place. Let the church say amen. Listen, don't forget to join us in our Bible study at 6 o'clock p.m. On Wednesday, join us for Bible study at 10 o'clock a.m. Don't forget to join us for our Sunday school review on our prayer conference call line as well as our prayer meeting uh, on Thursday at 7 p.m. on the conference call as well. Come on in and join us at that time. One more time. Oh, yeah. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Now may the love of God, sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may rest rule abide with us in forth now and forevermore. Every heart says amen. 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 God bless you all today.